Specimen of an Induction to a Poem by John Keats Lowe. I must tell a tale of chivalry. For large white plumes are dancing in mine eye. Not like the formal crest of latter days, but bending in a thousand graceful ways. So graceful, that it seems no mortal hand, or e'en the touch of Archimago's wand, could charm them into such an attitude. We must think, rather, that in playful mood, some mountain breeze had turned its chief delight, to show this wonder of its gentle might. Lo, I must tell a tale of chivalry, for while I muse, the lance points slantingly athwart the morning air. Some lady sweet, who cannot feel for cold her tender feet, from the worn top of some old battlement hails it with tears. Her stout defender sent, and from her own pure self no joy dissembling, wraps round her ample robe with happy trembling. Sometimes, when the good knight his rest would take, it is reflected, clearly, in a lake, with the young ashen boughs, gainst which it rests, and th, half-seen mossiness of linnet's nests. Ah, shall I ever tell its cruelty, when the fire flashes from a warrior's eye, and his tremendous hand is grasping it, and his dark brow for very wrath is knit? Or when his spirit, with more calm intent, leaps to the honors of a tournament, and makes the gazers round about the ring stare at the grandeur of the balancing? No, no, this is far off. Then how shall I revive the dying tones of minstrelsy? which linger yet about lone gothic arches, in dark green ivy, and among wild larches? How sing the splendor of the revelries, when but t's of wine are drunk off to the lees? And that bright lance, against the fretted wall, beneath the shade of stately banneral, is slung with shining cuirass, sword, and shield, where ye may see a spur in bloody field. Light-footed damsels move with gentle paces round the wide hall and show their happy faces, or stand in courtly talk by fives and sevens, like those fair stars that twinkle in the heavens. Yet must I tell a tale of chivalry, or wherefore comes that knight so proudly by? Wherefore more proudly does, the gentle knight, reign in the swelling of his ample might? Spencer, thy brows are arched, open, kind, and come like a clear sun rise to my mind, and always does my heart with pleasure dance when I think on thy noble countenance, where never yet was aught more earthly seen than the pure freshness of thy laurels green. Therefore, great bard, I not, so fearfully call on thy gentle spirit to hover nigh my daring steps, or if thy tender care, thus startled unaware, be jealous that the foot of other white should madly follow that bright path of light tracked by thy loved Libertas, he will speak, and tell thee that my prayer is very meek, that I will follow with due reverence, and start with awe at mine own strange pretense, him thou wilt hear. So I will rest in hope to see wide plains, fair trees and lawny slope, the morn, the eve, the light, the shade, the flowers, clear streams, smooth lakes, and overlooking towers.